Hey guys, I'm over here in uh, Tomball, Texas at, at the famous uh, Texas chocolate and barbecue uh, restaurant. We just finished eating our lunch. We had a fantastic meal. It was absolutely perfect. Uh, some of the best things that we ate, that I ate here, was their chile relleno sausage is really good. And now, uh, I'm with the owner here, Austin Moore. He's given us a tour of the place. He showed us the pit that they purchased off of Craigslist. Of all places, man, this is a fabulous looking uh, smoker and great restaurant. You guys have got to come out here and try it. So Austin, um, tell me a little bit, uh, why the chocolate and barbecue? Well, the chocolate actually came first. So the chocolate was actually done out of the house. Um, my dad had, you know, had sit, was sitting on the couch and saw two brothers on the on TV on the Travelers Channel, I think it was, and they were roasting cocoa beans and doing all that stuff. And and he just happened to order the equipment he needed for it and said, "Let's go for it." So that was in 2010, 2011, right around then. And um, he sold it to farmers markets. Whole food stores um, and specs and all that stuff for people right. to buy off the shelf, um, and then the barbecue came way later. Came in 2015 is when they officially opened the doors here. Mm -hmm. um, they realized that they weren't going to make enough money off of just just oh, just, just chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. So so then that's when the Black October came into the picture, mm -hmm. and they found it on Craigslist and said okay we're going to start a little small little pop-up while we have construction going on in the building yeah. um so you know just small barbecue sandwiches on the side or whatever cool, and cool. Uh, and then that's when the barbecue came in and it just basically it was slow going for a while mm -hmm. and then later on in 2017 summer of 2017 is when texas monthly came out and posted uh, us in their article on the ma in their magazine and posted us at number six in all of Texas. Oh wow! So wow. we're we're currently number six, and then Corkscrew is also number seven right behind us. Cool. cool. So and then if you've never heard of it, Snow's Barbecue out in Lexington, Texas. Mm -hmm. Miss Tootsie is their number one in Texas, and they're only open one day a week. Yeah, yeah. They're only open on Saturdays at eight a.m. And yeah. once they're out, they're out, and they run out within a couple of hours, and they're wow. done. Wow! Yeah, that's so cool. cool. It's so, good stuff. So tell me a little bit about the smoker. Why the name uh, Black October? Is that the name that it came with? They just no. That's not the name it came with. Uh, you guys name it that. So the reason it came, the reason the name came about is if you've ever seen the movie Hunt for Red October, uh -huh. that's how we got it because it was. It looks like obviously it, if you look at it it looks like a submarine sort of yeah um, so they would tow it down the road and people will be like oh look there's a submarine going down the road that's what it looks like so then my dad said okay well it's black october black october that's a cool name i like that name black so october that's the black october so we can walk this way a little bit and i can give you a little bit more history of, of so if you look at this guy right here, this is actually the original cocoa bean roaster. My dad and a couple of guys actually handcrafted this whole roaster by hand and built it up and all that stuff. And we were roasting small batches of, of chocolate in here. Okay. So then, you know, once, once the chocolate got bigger and all that stuff, when we moved over here, we no longer used it. They brought it with them, and then it just—it has just been sitting here, getting this rustic look on it, which is fantastic, which we yeah. like. Um, and then we kind of grew bigger from there. Yeah. So, so you, you, this is where you did your 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 chocolate, your cocoa. This is yeah. where we did the okay. the cacao beans at. Cocoa yeah. Beans? So we did all that stuff in here. So I can take this brick down. I can show you, give you a glimpse of inside of it as well. So if you look inside, there was a rod that would go through with the cylinder uh -huh. in it, and it would slowly rotate over it, and you stick your propane tank underneath. Right here, this is the the pit master. The master. This well, is Scott. Is Scott? Mm -hmm. One of the owners. Scott. Scott. Nice to meet you, Scott Juan Santos. I'm with JP Barbecue out of uh, Orlando, Florida. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a, a, a YouTube blogging type video okay. where I do barbecue, and. Uh, I was actually originally going to go to Spring, Texas and go check out the corkscrew, corkscrew yeah. 
and my, my wife, she says, you know, we, we watched Patty, Patty Janine. Oh, yeah. She came yeah. here and yeah. she interviewed you yeah. as well. And, and she said, you need to go to that place. Now, that place, you know, it's got a little twist to it. They got chocolate and barbecue. That's right. You know, she says, you got to bring me some chocolate. So I got to take some chocolate home to her. You know, back home in Orlando, she wasn't able to come with us. But, you know, that's why I'm here. Awesome. You know, I love barbecue and I love chocolate. <laughs> and your, your um, chili relleno sausage, fantastic. Thank you. I was really, really good yeah. And, um, that's a and good the, link. And the carrot souffle? Yeah, that's Michelle's recipe. Oh my goodness, yeah. that is really good. If there's if there's anything you come to Tomball, Texas for, guys, to this restaurant, you have to try the chile relleno sausage, and you also have to try their carrot souffle. It was fantastic. All the food was really good. Brisket was nice and moist, had a really nice bark on it. But the, the things to me that stood out, if, if you like sausage, if you like barbecue, you got to try that chile relleno sausage. It was really, really good. And, and the carrot souffle, needless to say, it was it, it was just like a party going on. It was it was <laughs> that good. I really liked it. So right so I have Austin here. And, and this is your father, right? Yes, yeah. sir. And Scott, uh, I guess these are the two owners of, of the restaurant. And uh, we're All just out here having a good time. My brother's in the kitchen. He's a partner, and Michelle's wandering around somewhere. I have no idea where. Okay, no. so so traditionally, it's, it's family-owned yes. business. Family-owned and operated. Yes. Cool, cool. That's good. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So um, he was just filling me in about the, mm -hmm. the Black October. What other uh, things could you tell us that are kind of unique to to your restaurant and, and your barbecue here that you know would bring more people out here? Well, I mean, we do it the old hard way. We use offset smokers, uh -huh. um, post oak wood. Um, these are manual, manually operated pits. There's nothing automated about it. Um, so it takes a lot of work, a lot of care, a lot of skill to mm -hmm. run these offsets the right way. Um, and we start with uh, high quality meats. We use a brisket, for example, that's it's a USDA prime, all natural. Brisket. So we start with we start with really good quality grades of meat, yeah. and that would be part of the story here. Mm -hmm. is, the, is what we started with, and then we have unique sides. Yeah, um, trying to do elevated sides. You know, the carrots and play you talked about, you know, the cornbread casserole, mm -hmm. fresh green beans, fresh pinto beans, uh, potato salad recipe. That's his great grandmother's recipe. Okay, cool. So, cool. Yeah. so a lot of a lot of the recipes are family owned Hero, recipes. Hero, that heirloom been, recipes, been, that's correct. Yep. Cool, yep. Cool. And we make our own sausage. Mm -hmm. um, so we, it's, um, it's a lot there's a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of hands on mm -hmm. uh, action, attention to detail. Yeah. Well it's obviously the you know, the love for the business is, is showing and shining through the food because yeah. the food was absolutely terrific. Thank Some you. of the best I've ever tried. You know, uh, we've eaten, um, at, at, I've never eaten at the course group, but we went to Terry Black's restaurant yeah. over there in Lockhart, Texas, yeah. and I had their, their huge, massive dino rib, yeah. and, and that thing was just like falling off the bone. And, and when, when barbecue is family owned and is passed down from family to family member, it just gets better with time. It just yeah. gets better and better. You know, I, exactly. Time. You just keep always getting better at all of it. So. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, no, Terry Black does a great job. You would enjoy Corkscrew a lot. They do a wonderful job. Cool, cool. Good friends with Will and Nicole. Um, that's the cool thing about barbecue in Texas. It's a, it's a fraternity. Mm -hmm. It's a brethren, so we all are supportive of each other. Yeah. Right on, right Everybody, on. Everybody, it's a mutual admiration and appreciation for mm -hmm. the work that goes into it, so we have a lot of respect for each yeah. other. And yeah, we went to Austin, Texas uh, two years ago. And I knew the line for Aaron Franklin would get long, yeah. but I didn't know how long. Yeah. And when I got there at 9 o'clock in the morning, and yeah, I saw how long late. the line went long, I was like, yeah, it's, it's, we're late to get you're, it. You're three hours late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I really enjoy it. Awesome. You know. Well, but appreciate you visiting. Thank you so much, All right. Scott. I All right. Y'all take care. Safe tour. travels to you. Thanks, sir. All right. In Austin. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so, very much. I appreciate it. Well, guys. Uh, if if you're in the neighborhood or if you're into barbecue and you and and you haven't been to Tomball, Texas, you got to come out and check out this place. Really good uh, barbecue. Really enjoyed it, and it's got a little unique twist to it. You know where they do chocolate and barbecue together. Uh, but besides that, guys, uh, we're gonna continue our tour. Thank you, Austin.
Like, so much. We'll continue and, uh, on back through here. So okay. like I was, we'll get back to what I was trying to, what I was telling you before. Mm -hmm. So this was, like I said, this is the original. Mm -hmm. And then we got bigger. So we have a bigger cylinder now right here. And then obviously we have that right there, which we handcrafted and built and did all that stuff right there. So it's okay. two, it's a propane tank with two burners that go underneath. Mm -hmm. And then it's a flame that shoots up and we just slowly rotate over that. And then we'll have a, we have a crate that we pour it into mm -hmm. and it'll sit on this table and that's where it'll cool down and relax and then we'll take it off of there and put it back into five gallon buckets and then they'll go sit in the chocolate room and then they'll get ground out and then we make about at least a hundred pounds of chocolate at a time. Oh wow. So oh, wow. we have a big old grinder that, you know, takes a hundred pounds of chocolate at a time. Yeah which is fantastic. We love it. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll continue through here. Okay. Oh, wow, oh, this yeah. smoker. So this is, oh, so this wow. is the dude. Uh, step back here, Mama. Yeah. And this one is actually custom built for us um, in Moberg Smokers out of Dripping Springs, which is just a little bit south of Boston. Look at the size of the firebox. This is absolutely, is the firebox this big or is this just? No, it's it's actually, it's, it's real wild well-rounded inside, so okay. it's, really, it's really well insulated. Mm -hmm. um, so it retains the it, heat it really stays well. warm out here. Well, you can warm. Touch it in that, in so that it's so. what's really cool about it is, is like if, you're, if you've got a cup of coffee and you want to keep it warm, it's always good to set it like right over right here there. because that's where that's where most of the heat goes up. So it gets hot right there. Yeah. Um, we have briskets and stuff on here right now that are being cooked for tomorrow so you have to always remember that when you're cooking your briskets they always get cooked the day before the day because before. they take longer than any other protein that you cook so the ribs the pork ribs the sausages the turkey the chicken mm -hmm. and all that stuff will get cooked the day of the morning of so it's got four doors on it but the last three mm -hmm. actually have shelves in them so we yeah. can pull them out and cook on top as we're cooking on the yeah. bottom. So this is a thousand gallon smoker. This is right? a thousand gallon, thousand gallon solid propane tank. Solid propane tank. So we got this pit just just a little after um, Texas Monthly came out. So right after Texas Monthly, that's when our cooking capacity needed to grow a little bit more, mm -hmm. and it took about six weeks to get this pit from Sonny Moberg and his team. And now, if you get a pit, it takes literally two years to, oh, win, wow. to get a pit from it. Yeah. So it's been a while, mm -hmm. and we actually have one on order. We're just waiting for them to finish some minor details and get it and bring it and drop it and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, That's how long the wait is. Oh, wow, look at these so briskets. Right now, this is the briskets that are on here for today. Mm -hmm. Going to tomorrow. Get a little closer. So we have all these in here. These went on at 9.30 this morning. So at about 4.30 this afternoon, me and another gentleman will be at this table and we'll wrap the briskets individually. So we'll have two sheets of butcher paper on the table and he'll bring a brisket out and set it down and then we'll spritz it down and then we'll wrap it and then put it back put on it back in. and it'll finish. Yeah. So that's where it comes in. So he kind of maintains the fire a little bit. So we run it at about two, 275, 250, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Um, and then, as most people ask, how long do you cook your briskets? And we always tell them, until they're done. Until they're done, yeah. Until they're done. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, sometimes, like Monday, we they were done, all the briskets were done by 8 o'clock. Yeah. They were all done. Now, do you check for internal temperature, or you just check for tenderness? Well, they, how do you check? So they pick them up, so they uh -huh. find out, they feel it all, they set it on the table here, and then they feel it for tenderness. Okay. And then... Every once in a while, if it's sitting here, they'll grab a, a temp gauge and they'll temp it a little bit. Okay. If it temps out at 206, then they'll then they'll take it, put it on a sheet pan, and it'll sit out here, and then so on and so yeah. on. Well, this is a fantastic looking smoker. I love it. I love the counterweights on it. Yeah, it's really nice. So two years, you know, in the waiting to get one of these built for you now. You know, I just love to show what the demand for barbecue this absolutely so this is it, it's a it's a fantastic pit um they want we they wanted to paint it and my dad basically told them don't even don't even bother yeah we saw a picture of it it looks fantastic 
and we we just left it in the condition it's in. Yeah. I mean, people come back here, they see it, they love it. It's fantastic, and uh, these guys put out an excellent product, and they're yeah. growing every day, and they're busy, mm-hmm. and that's a good thing. Yeah. So we. And, and what is the name of the company again? That it is them? Moberg Smokers. So it's right there on the side of the box. Uh, that's the that's their signature right there that they put on there. Um, so that way we know it's Moberg Smokers. Um, well, this is this is a very impressive smoker. Yeah. So that's that's kind of that's kind of the barbecue side of it. Okay. So we can continue this way. Right. Got to be what twelve inches? Something like that. Yeah, that is big. That's got a so nice. The actually, on. what's what's interesting is, is that the door right there. So all this framing work was put in way later. So the frame right, the, the door right there is. People were like, "How did you get this in here?" Mm-hmm. So what we did is they drove down the alleyway with their trailer, and then we had a uh, crane back in right behind it, and they craned it in right over the top. Right so in. that's where it's hot, but that's yeah. where we got these hooks at, right okay. there. So they hooked it on each end and balanced it, and they had to set it on the sidewalk once, mm-hmm. and then they had to rearrange and then pick it up and set it back in. Yeah. And this was kind of fun. They had to build around it, yeah. build around that stack. Mm-hmm. But other than that, man, this thing is, it's a, it's a beast. Yeah. We love it. We enjoy it. Um, and people keep coming back and love the briskets that we put out. Mm-hmm. The flavor of the meat. Yeah. Well, this, this is very impressive. I, I love the firebox. Yeah, that's, that's, that is so cool. It, it's a very impressive machine. I love it. So we can go through here and uh, we'll show you the uh, mm-hmm. So if you, if you get a close look at this, and you know how to, you notice how it's got a stone bottom mm-hmm. and stone wheels inside. So they basically, when once the beans from outside they get roasted, they cool down, they get ground, and then the, the, they have the cocoa nibs, and then they put the cocoa nibs in here. So then this slowly goes in a circle, and it, the stones turn two different ways. So it's right. basically crushing your cocoa nibs. Right. So then. After it gets crushed a good amount, then they add in all the ingredients in here, and that's how it gets the smooth consistency of the chocolate. Okay. And this makes this holds about a hundred pounds at a time. Okay. So this is the big grinder that we use. So, so getting getting them roasted from roasted, they come in here and just yeah, pretty much. So they go out, so they roast them outside, and they go into this back storage room, and then they get separated and then they go through a grinder in there which the shell will go one way and the nib will go another and then the shell actually turns into a semi powder which is really cool because you can actually recycle it and use it for um, fertilizer in your yard okay so we use it that way so that people go okay well you know you got chocolate and barbecue and then they get the waft of the chocolate smell coming out of the out of the floor, out of the ground outside. Right, right. So that's where the cocoa nibs go in. It's in here, and then they get ground and all that stuff, and you get your ingredients, and then we basically tilt it over and pour it into little molds and set them on the table, and then they get hard, and then that's when we make a big old thick block about this big, okay. which we'll see in here. All right. So right. We'll, we'll introduce you to the chocolate queen here, Jane. She's the chocolate queen. On YouTube for a minute. Oh, the chocolate okay. queen? This is the chocolate queen in here. She Hi. is the one that makes the, well, she's not the only one, but there's other girls in here that actually do it. Team of queens. So, so like I said before, the grinder's out here, right. and then this is after the chocolate gets ground and all that stuff, and, and molded and all that stuff, this is where it sits. Okay. And then they come and grab, and then they've got chocolate ganaches over there. Mm-hmm. And that's a really cool machine right there behind you, yeah. which is our tempering machine. They're getting, she's getting ready to start rolling. Start off. rolling. And that's what it looks like after she scooped it and rolled it first. Just scooped it out, and then they roll it. And then right in here is your Cherry Jubilee and uh, Martha Washington in here, which 
which is up there as well. So that's where the, all the truffles, this is how everything pretty much gets started. So like you go out and roast and then come back in here. And they have the canola and then they roll it out. And they have two tempering machines and it goes in there. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a nice, nice setup. I've never seen how actually you know, chocolate is made. This is my first experience with chocolate. And this is the, that's the neat thing about this experience is that we get to get the best of both worlds. We got barbecue and chocolate. You know, where else can you go for that? Right. You know, it's good stuff, good stuff. So in the main restaurant, there's a little room in the back, towards the back where the condiments and stuff sit. That was actually the original chocolate room at one point. So that's where they hand rolled all the truffles and stuff. that was before texas monthly way before that way before that and then as soon as texas monthly came out we rearranged this whole room down here and moved their chocolate operation down here so it gives them a lot more space yeah a lot more shelving to you know do what they need to do mm -hmm. um and stuff like that so that's kind of that was after texas monthly we moved everything out we moved it down here yeah the distance just started make, to expand and yeah grow. exactly and to make more room for seating up top so that right. way customers had a place to, mm -hmm. to sit and eat and they the customers come back and we get the regulars that come back and they go oh this is the old chocolate room that, oh, you know, and okay. stuff like is, that is that what that little know. room was that... so that's that little white room okay. that's we call it the white room so that's where the where the glass is mm -hmm. you can look inside that room and there's pictures of old tomball in there and that's kind of how tomball looked back then when, okay. before it looks like right now that would have been today so, okay but uh that's that is pretty much it my friends well i absolutely had a great time here i really appreciate the the experience austin uh, you know got to try out your barbecue my family really enjoyed it uh and, and the chocolate you guys have to come out and, and and try their chocolate you know it's top notch you know the way they make it all the way through you know and come to tomball texas guys and come visit texas uh, chocolate and barbecue you're not gonna you're not gonna regret it trust me it's really really good no nope. and i will tell you and i will tell you when you come and visit we have a saying that is come early and eat well mm -hmm. and on saturdays we do a golden ticket system and it's numbers one through 20 and they hang outside the door and people can come grab those and saturdays for us can kind of get really hectic get so really we have busy. two separate lines okay. just for that reason so I separate the line and make two lines, have a chocolate line, have a ticket line and a non-ticket line. So the ticket line lines up in order one through 20 and then at, t at 11 o'clock I call them all in an order and just have them hand me their ticket at the door. Good stuff guys, you guys gotta come check it out, okay? Uh, well Austin, thank you so much. I appreciate it, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. You I had a coming. great time. My family really enjoyed it. And uh, the viewers, you guys, you guys got to come to Tomball, Texas. Check out this place. You know, really, really good, uh, unique experience. Okay, but besides that, guys, if you guys get a chance, do me a favor. Uh, right there on the corner, just a little subscribe button. Click on that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And, uh, and as before, as always, guys, I really appreciate all my viewers. I love you guys. Take care, and I will see you on the next one.